Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode on 539. So I'm actually, uh, this is the very last thing I'm actually doing before I leave this place. So you're going to want to check this one out because I already know that we're going to find some incredible things here. Uh, also, uh, to all of you out there who are just now finding this channel, uh, we do these episodes about four times every single week. So if you're into the adventure travel here on YouTube, uh, you're going to want to hit that subscribe button and turn those bell notifications on. So let's go and see what I already found and what you guys are about to find. All right, let's check out this up here, see what it is. I kind of felt like it was gonna be something historical and it looks like I'm right. I thought it was a war memorial, um, which it may be. I'm seeing some Native American names up here. And then one lone Woodman of the World uh, marker in the middle here. Okay, so this is the daughter of Chief Little Turtle. I don't know how many of you know uh, that story. A uh, fairly big part, I believe, of American history. Um, so yeah, um, make sure if you don't know uh, the story of Little Turtle to look that up. But this is apparently one of the chief's granddaughters here. So how cool is that? And uh, lots of things around, or maybe not lots of things, but a few different things around here have the name Kilsaqua, uh on them, including, I believe, a park. And uh, so let's check out this marker behind here. And then there's also right next to it, underneath this uh, POWMIA flag, a um, a marker, a veteran's marker, excuse me, from the Spanish-American War. So I'm not sure exactly what the significance of this being here is, other than maybe it was just a, uh, not spare one, but uh, a marker that maybe no longer could be associated with a veteran or a marker uh, that had been uh, updated at some point, so they brought it over here. I don't know. Kind of uh, strange. I never found just a random marker like this. Well, from here, I'm not exactly sure which direction to go. I think first, we're going to head right over here. There seems to be a fair collection here of the Woodmen of the World markers. Uh, right up here is three in a row. Uh, probably part of all one installation, I would guess. But uh, looks really interesting. A little bit out of place. Uh, just meaning that it looks like things around here have been moved around a lot. Uh, maybe there's just been some erosion damage here, and that's what caused that to fall over, but I don't know, these seem very crammed together. So there's another really unique one down this way. Uh, and it's made to sort of look like a real small chair. And on the top of the chair is like a, either a book and a scroll or they just sort of left the stone here behind the scroll. But again, another unique one. I've never found one that was shaped exactly like a chair before.
So this place definitely has suffered a lot from erosion damage. Um, a good number of the stones are either tilted or falling, just like this one right here. And uh, you can tell, I just now noticed that this marker here on top of this base stone is actually uh, not related in the least to uh, these names here. And so probably just a sign that they found it and don't exactly know where it goes. And here's our other Woodman of the World monument right here. One of the others. There's quite a few and you can see that it too has uh, the effect of the bark being peeled back and then you know, interesting up top uh, it has this branch that wraps around the rest of the monument here. And let's keep going because I don't think it yeah it doesn't appear to be attached in any way. Uh, obviously it is actually attached, but I mean, in terms of the branch, it is like a branch was cut off of a tree and then laid that way. So it's kind of, I'm wondering if it's supposed to be symbolic. The living stump potentially with the uh, dead limb cut from the top. This right here is really, really thin. I've been trying to read more and more of the poetry that's at the bottom. Uh, it's a little bit difficult a lot of times to read it while I'm here. Another mystery. I don't think this is a monument at all. It almost looks like steps. Like maybe at one point the ground was lower on the other side here. It doesn't have any names. There's no evidence of anything being on top of it ever. And over here to the side it's just roots. So it'd be unlikely that it would be able or a headstone would be able to fall off of it and be buried behind of it behind it excuse me and seems a little bit unlikely on the other side as well Very simple markers here, and I would guess that they were actually replacements for uh, headstones that disappeared. It seems like they're just whatever remains of the base, and then they've been cut out and had this replacement stone put into them. Again, uh, just a place that I randomly drove by and did a little bit of research on it. Uh, mostly just aerial photography. So I'm not really sure exactly which way to go here. So I think I'm just going to continue on this row and try to take it on back. Again, decent amount of erosion damage that you can see right here but it's just sort of random throughout the entire place it kind of makes sense though that's just the way the Midwest is in a lot of ways the ground can get very very uneven especially during the rainy seasons but they obviously have a very active maintenance uh, crew here they seem to be doing a really good job of keeping a lot of things intact. 
Although, again, I always wonder, you know, why certain older historic items are left by the wayside. Well, this is an interesting little mystery right here. I don't know what the shape is supposed to represent. So yeah, let me know if you have any ideas. This is huge. And just leaned up against this tree. I wonder if this was the original way that this uh, installation was intended to be displayed. Kind of hard to tell. It looks like it could have been intended for an angle, but it also appears like it could have been meant to be like a ground level. They've definitely put in a new road right here, but I do see a lot of historical items over here. So let's go uh, this way, see if uh, we can find anything else here that's incredibly old, uh, historically significant, or just uh, plain interesting. here from 1873 and then over here of, in front of it is three more markers really hard to see what's written and just appears to be completely worn away Now the cross, I'm not sure about. I think that might just be a decoration. Uh, it does look worn, but it doesn't look like it was necessarily ever meant to have any names on it. And I think it was just a very, very historic uh, decorative marker. We can see uh, some of these do have legible writing on it. This is an interesting configuration here of staggered uh, headstones. And oddly, as normal as it would seem, uh, I really haven't stumbled upon this sort of staggering before. Uh, let's continue on down the hill. It looks like this right here is the very last historical marker in this section at least. Um, even though it's very clear that the borders continue on back. Alright, I'm going to continue on and back actually into the, what appears to be the older section where they had the gravel roads instead of these nice uh, paved blacktop roads. But uh, who knows, we might find some more historical stuff that way or maybe not. You really can't tell in this place. And again, um, everything's so mixed up I'm not sure exactly which way to go from here. So just sort of taking a guess, uh, I think we'll run into something. Uh, interesting at the very least. Mm -hmm. 